welcome you back in my geography class this is your devika ma'am and today we will continue with the chapter of major landforms of the earth of class 6 in our last video we have explained about the plateaus where we came to know what are plateaus how are plateaus formed and what are the importances of plateaus today in this video we will continue and we will know about the other land form and that are plains as we have learned that based on the elevation and slope there are three major land forms and they are mountains plateaus and plains already we have discussed about mountains and plateaus and today we will know about plains so without wasting much of our time let's get started now what are plains plains are large stretches of flat lands which are not more than 200 meters above mean sea level so plains are large stretches of flat lands which are not more than 200 meter above mean sea level the plains are extremely flat lands but we will see that there are plains which are slightly rolling and undulating what do you mean by undulating it means up and down just like the waves so we will see that the plains are extremely flat lands and some are slightly rolling and undulating now let us know that how are plains formed plains are formed by the rivers and their tributaries now we have seen that there are many rivers that rises in the mountains now when this rivers comes down that means comes down to the valleys they erode the mountains and along their course of river they carry sand silt clay and stone now what is erosion i hope all of you remember that erosion is the wearing away of the earth surface now what happens the rivers that rises in the mountains they flows down the slopes of the mountains and erode them so we can say that rivers that flows the slopes of the mountains erodes them and carry forward their eroded materials so they carry forward their eroded materials now when the rivers moves down slope the erosional capacity reduces at a point they will deposit all the eroded materials which are a mixture of sand silt and clay or we can say alluvium we can say that the rivers deposit the eroded materials along their course and in valleys and this deposited materials forms plains and this plains are the most densely 
populated regions of the world. So let us know that why are the plains most densely populated regions of the world? Why are plains most densely populated regions of the world? As we know that plains are formed by the deposition of alluvium, so we can say that plains are very fertile and thus it is productive for cultivation. We can also see that as the plains are flat lands, so we can say that flat lands are available for building houses, for construction of industries. Now as the plains are flat lands, so construction of transportation and communication network are easy. We will see that there are many rivers that flows across the plains. are used for navigation and irrigation. Most importantly, climate of the plain regions is very suitable for human settlements. We can say that plains are very fertile as they are formed by the deposition of sediments by the rivers and thus it is productive for cultivation. We will see that more flat lands are available for building houses, construction of industries, construction of transportation and communication network are quite easy in the plains. Rivers that flows across the plains are used for navigation and irrigation and the climate is very suitable in the plains for human settlements. So these are the reasons which makes the plains most densely populated regions of the world. In India, the Indo-Gangetic plains or we say the northern plains are the most densely populated regions. As we are talking about the plains, the largest plains formed by the rivers are found in Asia and North America. In Asia, the plains formed by the rivers Ganga and Brahmaputra and the Yangtze in China. 
now we can see that there are many landforms that can be found in the Earth's surface. And this landforms plays a very important role in shaping the life of the people. All of us are dependent on landforms. We obtain different things from landforms. So we can say that landforms are very crucial for our living. But we will see that human beings live differently on different landforms. Let us see how we can say that humans have been living on different landforms in different ways. For example, if we talk about mountains, we will see that in mountains life is quite hard. So we can say that life is tough in mountains. Why? Because in mountains we do not get much land for cultivation, for construction of settlements, for construction of transportation and network. All these are very difficult in mountains. Whereas if you talk about plains, life is easier in plains because it is easier to construct houses, to construct transportation and communication networks and also flat land is available for cultivation thus it is quite easier to live in plains compared to mountains now we will see that humans who are living on different landforms they also has to face natural calamities like earthquake volcanic eruptions storms floods which leads to huge loss of lives and properties. So we can see that there is a relationship between man and landforms. Landforms are the gifts of nature and they are priceless. So what we are doing, we are exploiting the landforms. We are misusing the landforms. How we are misusing? We can see that day by day our population is increasing. With the increase in population, the demand for cultivation will increase because the demand for food crops will increase. Also, there will be much demand for land so that different industries or settlements can be constructed. So we are recklessly cutting down the trees that is referred as deforestation which is leading to soil erosion. Further, it is leading to degradation of soil and degradation of land. We will also see that there is a problem of overgrazing by the animals, which is again leading to degradation of land and soil. We will see that quite often we use land in a wasteful manner or we can say that for wasteful purpose. like construction of houses on fertile land. Fertile land means a land which is fertile and which is suitable for cultivation of different crops. What we are doing sometimes we construct houses on the fertile land whereas a barren land, the west land which are infertile, which are not of any use where we cannot do cultivation, they are kept as it is and what we are doing, we are utilizing the fertile land that is available for cultivation. Often we have seen that we, that we throw garbage on land or on water causing land and water pollution and thus affecting our environment. 
Now let us see that what are the steps that can be taken so that we can stop this misuse and we can conserve this landforms for our future generation. We should not construct houses on a fertile land because we must remember that the fertile land should be used for cultivation purpose. Natural resources like land and water are very important for our sustenance. We should not misuse these natural resources. We should not throw garbage on land or in water, polluting and deteriorating the quality of land and water. We should not cut trees unnecessarily because we know that trees play a very important role in conserving the land resources. We should plant more trees so that we can protect the soil from getting eroded. We should avoid using such important gifts of nature in a careless manner to save our landform for our future generation. We must remember that healthy mind lives in healthy body and for a healthy body clean environment particularly clean water air and hygienic surroundings are prerequisite. Swachh Bharat Mission a government of India program aims to achieve all this for people so we can see that how hard our government is trying to provide us with a clean environment i hope all of you understood the topic that we have covered in today's video where we have discussed about the plains how are the plains formed by the rivers we have also discussed that why are plains called the most densely populated regions of the world what is the relationship between man and landforms and what can be done so that we can protect the landforms for our future generation still if you have any problem in any topic do let me know by commenting in the comment box given below you can also take the help of the pdf that has been attached in the description box for better understanding of the chapter do like share and subscribe my channel to watch more upcoming videos on different topics with this we came to an end of this chapter stay tuned i will be back soon with a new chapter and a new video till then take care and stay safe thank you